story. This is your story, and this is my story. The evidence we have currently demonstrates that life on Earth appeared roughly 4 billion years ago. Humans arrived maybe two to 300,000 years ago. Listen to the story, which is yours, and decide what you want to do with it. In truth, this story does not begin on this planet at all, but with a star. A star as beautiful and incredible as all of the other stars in the sky, as amazing as our sun. This star exploded and in it created a rapid torrent of energy, expanding out in all directions, in all dimensions. From this explosion of energy laid the foundation for new life, new creations and new manifestations to take place. One such manifestation was our solar system and all of our planets. In the beginning, our planet was a collection of dust and rock particles, a hard shelled ball. Volcanoes show us what the earth used to look like and how it evolved. Volcanoes became like a furnace, creating water in liquid form through evaporation and heat emerging from within the crust of the earth. Water formed vessels like bloodstreams across the face of the planet and many oceans became heavy with salt. The mineral and rock formations within the earth gave a means for crystals to form and crystals contained a natural biological geometry for a higher consciousness to emerge. Where did biological life first spark? Scientists believe primitive life forms called archaeobacteria, blue-green algae was the first form to turn to the sun for energy and reproduce and evolve. They transformed the atmosphere of the planet. Before this time, the atmosphere was rich with carbon. These billions of microorganisms grew from the carbon and the carbon drained from the atmosphere and entered the crust to become what was next. The life spread throughout the water, through water cycles, waterfalls, rivers, oceans. All life drinks the same water. Water is essential. Life that grows depends on water. It depends on the sun. The air we breathe comes from the algae. The algae needs fresh water to continue to grow. The engine of life is linkage. In life, everything is connected. Water and air are one. Sharing is everything. In nature, everything is shared. Coral is formed from algae and shells coming together, which provide homes for more fish and other life. Trees took a very long time to grow. They reach upwards towards the sun and are perfect statues as if striving towards higher truth. They have the power to capture life's energy from the sun, turning it into vegetable, wood, and other living matter. From that, new soils are formed. Earth relies on a balance. Every being has a role to play. Every species exists in cooperation and harmony with another species. And this harmony is not easily shattered. Everything is used in nature. Everything has a purpose. How many species are there that we know of? What do we truly know about the bonds that link them all? The earth is a miracle and to modern science, life still remains a mystery. Today, life is just a link in a chain of innumerable others over 4 billion years old. And within just a pinprick of that amount of time, we, the homo sapiens, with our tremendous brains and nearly limitless potential, have disrupted that balance completely. What this means is that there's something really magnificent and fantastic about us. And we may have dropped the ball a bit. Humans appeared on this planet several hundred thousand years ago, and we have transformed the face of the planet. There are many stories about how it happened. Nobody knows for sure. The ancients speak of sky people who came down and began inhabiting the lands, of lost civilizations and cities which functioned more in tune with themselves. These records come from our ancestors nearly 6,000 years ago, which today we believed was our first civilization. Regardless of where we came from, we can see what has happened since we have arrived. This is what we're going to look at. We're going to do it in short form because it's really depressing. So just bear with me while we go through this. We have taken control of every species of life, of all lands, and turned it for ourselves. We took control of animals to help discover and conquer new territories. We subjugated the growth of plants, calling it agriculture. From that spawned cities and civilizations, eliminating the need to migrate around and scavenge for food. Now, it was in our backyard. But that wasn't enough. We needed more. We tapped into the energy deep within the earth. Pockets of sunlight, captured in millions of years worth of coal, gas, and oil. And we have seen more change within 50 years than in the last 13,000 years combined. And not all of it is good. Cities like New York and Los Angeles are symbols of the exploitation of oil and the resources that we have forcibly extracted. There aren't many farmers left and the industrialized farming actively poison our foods with pesticides, which in turn poisons us. Don't believe me? Just ask the food workers wearing radiation suits. 
But how can all of the food demands be met without concentration caps of cattle? We're not a blade of grass can grow. Instead of grass, trucks haul in grain that is fed to the cattle to become meat to stuff our faces. Houses are cloned, copied, and standardized, wiping creativity off the map. Everywhere, machines dig, rip, bore, and tear into the earth, faster and faster, without any regard for the millions of years worth of what Mother Earth has been creating. Excessive mining will soon exhaust all of the planet's reserves. A hundred millions of metric tons of fish have been exhausted. Most large fish have been fished out of existence because they no longer have time to reproduce. Globally, water levels are falling. Places like Las Vegas are the biggest consumers of water in the world. Where in other places they have none, and women dig aquifers day after day. Deforestation tears up the earth to make way for new factories. In some places, deforestation is a last resort for survival. Every one in six humans live in a crowded, overpopulated environments and don't have access to clean water or even electricity. The current plan, it seems, is to pick every pocket of sunlight and use it all up until there's none left. Even heating the tar sands in Canada is getting consumptuous. The way we burn fuel pumps carbon back into the atmosphere, upsetting the Earth's climactic balance as well. How long can this mirage continue? How long can we continue to fool ourselves into thinking that we can survive on this Earth that we're creating? This is our home. It is our responsibility to ourselves and to everything else on this planet to correct the mistakes that we've made. Now I'd like to make something clear about what's just been shared, what we've been looking at, the poverty, the water levels, the exploitation of oil and raping Mother Earth's body for anything that we can get our hands on. Well, this is often looked at as the cause of what's going on. In truth, this is the result. This is what we've created as a result of what's going on. So what's really going on? This is something we've looked at before in spirit science. This vibe that often feels like a gnashing, gnawing, tearing apart feeling. It feels like it's happening inside ourselves and most of us don't have any idea of what it is. It's the separation and all of the stuff that comes from it. The fear, the anxiety, the I'm not good enough, the I want to have power over you. All of that is the result of the same thing the feeling of being separate. The illusion that you are separate and the fear and the hurt that comes along when you think that you are alone. You are not alone. We are not alone. It's time that we recognize that we are the power. We are the planet. We are the ones to create the new world for ourselves. It's not up to someone else. It's not something we need to vote on. It's not even something that we need to wait to do. It's a space that we can come from a space that we can come to within ourselves. All of the problems of the world could be fixed overnight if everyone could come from that space. In the current world, we lie to ourselves and each other all the time. We tell each other that we can't do it, that we're not good enough. When we lie, every action we take is in defense of that lie. Until we can come to a space where we are honest with ourselves, then we can start to be real with ourselves. When we come from that space, we can come to the table with something new, a new space that says, okay, what's going on? How can we fix it? Through conscious conversations with each other, we can think of new ways of doing things. Hey, shut that machine off, it's poisoning us. Done. Hey, let's rewrite our healthcare system. Let's try doing something new that works. Done. Hey, let's make all cars 100% electric. Let's make a way of generating electricity for free. That space you come from that makes that kind of conversation possible is the heart, the unity consciousness, the Christ within, also known as just plain honesty. It's a space that doesn't deny what is real in favor of a more convenient lie. It's a space that is honest about how one feels and what one sees. It's a space that listens with the intention of understanding what another says, rather than just waiting for the other person to stop talking so that you can start talking again. It's a space that's compassionate for all humans, all life, from the best of them to the worst of them. A space that holds all life as a sacred thing and something that can be explored from a space of excitement and freedom. You are not alone. We can make this happen and we can all do it together. We can do it for ourselves and we can do it for each other. We can do it in a way that works. In fact, the only way to do it is to do it together, not on your own, not as the sole leader of the movement, 
but together. You're involved, I'm involved, and we're both doing what we love and loving what we do. And from that space, anything is possible. True freedom is the absence of limitation, the presence of possibility. Think of it this way. The ancient civilizations understood all of this. But they didn't have the technology that could create the powerful life for themselves, an amazing life full of wonder and awe. See, today we have all that technology to be able to do that, but none of the awareness of how to make it happen. It's very much Fibonacci. With Fibonacci, we take what we had previously and what we have now and add them together. We take the best of both worlds, the technology and the awareness, and we put them together. It's the natural way of doing things so that we exist in abundance, exist in growth, exist in harmony, just like the rest of nature. It's by design, 